So in this video, I wanted to take LED fire and add some modular flexibility to really highlight some epic moments in my games, adding some features to classic black magic craft designs, as well as a few newer designs of my own. Welcome to the archive. My name's Matt. I love the idea behind these fire markers that Jeremy did, from the smoke effect to the battery removable tea light so that they last pretty much forever. My one little niggle with them is that you're locked into one colour, when it can be incredibly thematic to be able to change out the colours for different situations. If a dragon burns down the village, then sure, use that classic colour. But if a warlock is flinging around demon fire, green flame really adds to that extra planar feeling. It pulls me right back to World of Warcraft warlocks and demons in the Burning Crusade zones. Then say an icy fortress or arcane sanctum needs a wall of fire. Now you can make it nice and thematic by giving them a cool sterile blue flame. Not every build needs to have an LED in my view, but LEDs can be incredibly useful for modularity because you can use them to change the colours of things, and that's where I think they're worth using. To give me the ability to do this, I made a bunch of these little modular LED sockets, which also makes it cheaper to use for other things because you can just move the LEDs around. These are easy to make and the materials are cheap and easily available. I went with using the bottom of cheap dropper bottles that I'd picked up off Amazon anyway to transfer paint from NAF Citadel pots, because they fit perfectly within the bottom of these plastic shot glasses, which is very useful later. Or you can just double up shot glasses, but this makes the whole thing a little bit taller. Up to you. I actually also found a much better and cheaper method towards the end, and I'll show that too. All I did to start off was cut the flat edge off with about 3 eighths of an inch left at the edge. If you are going to use this method, I would recommend leaving a little bit more than you think you need on the edge on your first cut, and then trimming it down to be flat afterwards, unless you feel really confident. I then cut out a quarter inch of the edge to give an easy slot to put the battery in, which is just one part of this design that saves a lot of fiddling at the game table. To fit the LED in, I drilled two holes with a pin vise at the edge opposite to the side hole, and hot glued two 3mm by 2mm magnets in on either side like this, north side up. I drilled holes for mine to keep it as flat as possible, but that's optional. Magnets for this little socket are completely optional, but they do make it more stable and they do make it easier to add and remove batteries quicker. For the LED itself, I picked a colour and bent the wire as close to the LED as possible, 90 degrees, and then put it on the middle and found where I'd need to bend it to get it into the little holes that I drilled, and bent them both 90 degrees there, before sealing it in place on top with some hot glue to make fiddling around underneath easier. Don't worry if you don't hit this bang on, it's pretty easy to adjust. Well, at least until you glue it. At this point, I added a wibble to both. A downwards bulging wibble on top to the smaller prong, and an upwards bulging one in the bottom longer prong. This gives a nice open edge to slot the battery in easily, but makes sure each side has a solid connection and won't fall out. I then bent the wires 90 degrees underneath, bending the longer one slightly further down so that it can reach around the bottom of the battery. The top wibble should be just lower than the magnets, so that it still connects, but the magnets can hold it securely. To seal it, I hot glued the top prong down at the tip with hot glue. The bottom prong can be adjusted pretty much whenever. From there, I just slotted the battery in, letting the magnets do their work and hold it in place firmly, easily, and without wobbling. You can do this with a bunch of different colours, flickering and non-flickering for different placements and effects. The materials are cheap and the result is small, so you can make pretty much as many as you want. The even cheaper and more flexible method that I worked out later basically uses the metal of the LED and battery to attach to the magnet on the pieces. All you need is an LED and hot glue. You can bend the LED around some needled nose pliers halfway down the prongs and give them a little bit of a flick at the end. Then you just need to put the hot glue where you don't want them to connect to the battery, so at the top of the long prong, at the bottom of the smaller prong, and at the bend for both, just to be sure. This makes them a fraction of the price, and fills basically the same role. You can also use these with even smaller batteries. Both types are linked in my equipment list, along with everything else I use here, and more information on how to use it. Anyway, with a stack of those made, I moved on to the various pieces that would hold my new creations. Soon, my pet. Matt? The fire markers are made in a similar design to the Black Magic Craft Classic, the main difference being the sockets needing to be removable, but I also added some new textures. To make it removable, I cut the bottom off a plastic shot glass that would just about fit a socket inside, drilled or melted a hole for the LED to fit in with either a glue gun or a rotary tool, and also drilled slash melted a hole on one side to put a 3mm magnet in north side up. This'll grab the LED prongs or the magnet on top of the socket and hold it in place. 
Incidentally, these shot glasses are also great for storing these kind of batteries while keeping them separate so they don't burn out by touching each other. I tried three techniques for this, wrapping the piece in tin foil and then covering it with hot glue, wrapping it with tin foil and then adding modeling compound, and shaping the bases from pure modeling compound. I painted all three of these with black paint and Mod Podge. I didn't use paper towel and glue for this because Jeremy's pretty much already shown the result of that. All three of these worked, but from a sheer speed perspective, I prefer the pure modeling compound. It cuts out a step. If you prefer cheapness, the hot glue method is probably a little bit cheaper, but really not by much. You might notice that these are a little bit smaller than the Black Magic Craft versions. This is deliberate. You can absolutely make these bigger, just make the base section larger. But having a smaller marker, I think makes it more flexible. A two inch marker leaves a gap on a three inch tile for minis to navigate around and makes it a lot easier to use these indoors in tight spaces. For the texture, I wanted to play with real materials. I feel like they give a really good detailed effect that would be far harder to do with painting. With that in mind, I grabbed some charcoal and chipped it up into smaller chunks and rubble, which I then sieved into two cups, one dense and one fine. I sprinkled on the larger bits onto a thick layer of strong PVA glue, and then sprinkled the smaller bits on top so that they would find all of the gaps. This way the smaller pieces and dusty bits don't seal up the glue and stop the larger pieces having a chance to stick. A lesson I learned here was it's a good idea to blue tack these pieces to the bottom of a spare cup like this first. Saves a lot of frustration. To add some more white ash to the effect, I went outside and burnt some of my junk mail and sprinkled some on top before sealing that with a few layers of scenic sealant and a layer of spray matte varnish on top for good measure. Now this isn't the absolute toughest result, but it's fairly resilient and it looks like real burnt rubble because it is. The smoke was done in pretty much the same way as the Black Magic Craft original. Pillow stuffing sprayed with cheap spray paint, more black the further down I sprayed, and glued on top of the LED slot base with hot glue. In the end, I decided I didn't like the steep edges or the symmetrical circular shape. So I cut the edges from one side so that the fire would line up right against a wall or another fire marker, and widened the rubble on the base to give a more gentle slope. But that's it. Now these fire markers can be used to show any colour of fire or other magic for different environments and monsters, adding that extra layer of thematic depth to an encounter. As always, here's some nice rotating shots of the fire in action while I give my thanks to those awesome people who make these videos possible, the channel's patrons. As it stands, Patreon is the channel's lifeblood. Without it, there is no way I could afford to keep making these videos. So please know it means the absolute world to me if you consider supporting my work here. Incidentally, one of my awesome patrons sent me these fully painted demons and freaks to use in videos, among some other things. So thank you so much to Dustin. You genuinely help these videos come out faster. There's also a ton of benefits to being a patron, including bonus crafting videos, live streams with an insight into my processes, and polls on what exactly I make next. So if any of that sounds good, please check it out. Anyway, then I got started on something I've wanted for games for a while now, an LED wall of fire. I made it as a mix of one inch and two inch walls, which lets you use them as pretty much any length of wall that you might need, or as a circle, kind of, close enough. Saves making an actual circle too. To make the light travel all the way up evenly, I borrowed a technique from Eric over at Eric's Hobby Workshop, using a glue stick to extend the LED light further. To do this, I used some of the larger 11 millimeter glue sticks. I cut them in half to two inches tall and then glued them together. I then trimmed them to a point at the top and cut some basic fire shapes into them with plenty of gaps between the tongues of fire, before melting a hole in between them at the bottom to give the LED space to slot into. To make space for the rest of the socket, I glued it to the bottom of a cut down shot glass just like the fire marker, but first I cut away the sides of the shot glass so it would be exactly one inch wide. I could then glue multiple of these together for a two inch wall or keep them separate for a one inch one. You can seal this up on the outer edge quite easily, just with a bit of plastic packaging and hot glue. I also trimmed away the sharp corner at the front and back to give it a more random fiery shape, because this slightly affects how the light will appear later. Totally optional. I used hot glue over the shot glass to meld it into the hot glue above in a smooth curve. You want to do this in layers and let them cool so it doesn't melt the whole bottom of the glue sticks. I then did the bottom part of this over parchment paper so it wouldn't stick to the desk. To give the fire shape more detail and light variation, I sculpted the hot glue with my glue gun from there. I feel like I'm slowly learning the key to getting a nice realistic effect when sculpting hot glue into fire. And that key seems to be, don't be afraid to mutilate your work. 
The best results I got were when I gouged in great deep canyons in the glue to show the curving, flowing shape of the fire in three dimensions, not just two. It seems to work really well with the LED too, because the light bounces off it in a much more realistic way, and the colour gets brighter in the deeper crevices naturally. Once I had that rough shape, I added loads more smaller gouges crisscrossing up the flames in wavy lines to give more texture, and then very carefully sharpened the tips by melting only the very tip of the glue and drawing it out just a little, and then letting it cool before pulling the hot glue gun away entirely so it didn't get overstretched. Any excess wisps can then be melted away as long as they're thin enough. Painting I kept to a minimum to avoid messing up the light effect, but I did spray a very light zenithal of black ink from the side to make sure any non-lit up bits looked grey and smoky rather than white and weird. I might have overdone this on my ones. They look a little bit black. You could do the same thing with a dry brush of black paint, it just wouldn't blend as well. I did this at the bottom too because the light isn't quite as strong there, so it really filled it out at the edges to hide that white glue look. But Matt, smoke is usually at the top. Yeah, I know. But one, this is magic fire erupting from the ground. I'm going to call extenuating circumstances. Arr. And two, it looks cooler this way. Finally, I gave these pieces a spray of matte varnish to seal on the ink and take the shine away from the smoke. And that's all there is. Pick a colour, slot in a battery, plug it in the bottom and play. Finally, I wanted something quick and easy that would show a building or village on fire. It seemed like an easy way to show which buildings were on fire, because fire markers won't fit inside the buildings with the rooftops on. This was really quite simple in the end. I cut a triple layer piece of chipboard to fit a window, and then hot glued a matchstick to one side to be able to slot it in. Then I just drilled a hole in the centre to fit an LED, and covered it with hot glue in a fiery shape to spread the light wider. I did this layer by layer to build up the shape while not having glue drip everywhere. And then once I had the shape that I wanted, I used the heat of the hot glue gun again, without its little rubber cap, to blend them all together, and melted some fire-like waves into it just like with the wall of fire. I also made sure I melted enough of a hole in the back for the LED to still fit snugly. If you drill a hole tight enough, the LED can hold in place just like this, but if you find it's too wide, you can glue on a magnet to hold the socket in place better. If players do end up going inside, you can just remove these and replace them with normal fire markers. This is where those flat edged versions that I made earlier that are less than 3 inches wide come in really useful. Another cool thing you could do is make fire markers or flames attached to my removable roof tiles, which I might show in a future video if it fits. Please subscribe, like, comment and share, and until next time, I'll be in the archive.